it's been over 10 years since our country went to war with Afghanistan and Iraq, and during that time, just over 8,000 troops have lost their lives. It's important not to forget those heroes that put their life on the line for all of us. And that's why I've invited a special guest to our show who spends countless hours each week volunteering on Camp Pendleton and worked hard to raise funds to make sure we never forget those who lost their lives fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. I'd like to welcome Linda Sundra to the show. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. To stop by prime time. Um, let's talk about you, a little background. You were in insurance, big insurance. Yes. Worked in New York. Yes. In the claims department. Yes. You, ha you saw everything. It was stressful. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> How many years did you do this? I did it for 24 years. And then you got to retire. Yes. And that was a stressful, stressful job. And now you get to do your dream job. Absolutely. Tell us about that. I work with the Rotary Club of Camp Pendleton. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, founded on the base in about seven years ago. We were the first and only Rotary Club that was allowed to be on an active military base. And Rotary is a service organization. Our motto is service above self. Mm -hmm. We have no political or religious affiliations. We just do good things. And so my job is to help Marines any way that I can. And you go above and beyond the call of duty. Tell the viewers some of the things you're doing for them because it is pretty amazing. Well, every week we go out and one of our biggest programs is called Generation to Generation. And it's a relationship that we developed about six years ago now with La Costa Glen Retirement Community in Carlsbad. And what we do is as they downsize or they pass away, they give us all of their household goods, furniture and kitchen items for free. And all they ask is that the Marines come and pick it up so they can see the people that they're helping. They feel relevant and the Marines who, if they get married and get base housing, have nothing, are now helped to get their life started. Ah, oh, that's cool. And you form bonds with these families as well. Absolutely. And are they lasting bonds? Yes. Tell us about that. Well, a lot of them will, you know, come in and pick out what they need and then they'll come back several times or they'll come back and show us pictures of how their house looks now and they'll thank us and then we'll go back at Christmas time and bring toys Aww. and things for their children. Tell us about a very special family, like the most memorable family to you that really had impact on you. I know they all do, but there's got to be a one standout above all the rest. Well, this is not a happy story. Okay. I got a call one day from a battalion commander's wife who said she was babysitting a two-year-old. And one of the sergeants in her husband's command had just been pulled out of Okinawa on an emergency. He came back with his wife and two children, one two-year-old and one one-year-old. His wife was 27 years old, diagnosed with colon cancer that had spread to her liver. And this commander's wife called and asked if there was something we could do to help her because after going down to Balboa Hospital and coming back after chemo, she was sleeping on the floor because of everything they owned was still in Okinawa. Oh my gosh. So we hurried out and got her a bed and, and a, a sofa and some tables and cause all she wanted to do was make a meal for her family so she could feel um, normal. And then we paid for daycare for the two children for two months so that the sergeant could focus on his wife making a difference in someone's life. What's the story? What, what was the ending? Was it a happy ending? Did she no. Live? Oh. Do you follow that family, the father and the two? Yes. And are, where are they now? They, uh, he's since left the service. Uh, well, you made a difference. At least that time that she was alive, you were able to give them some peace and some relief. Well, there's lots of stories like mm, that. I know, and you're making a difference. You're like their angel. No, it's a privilege. It's an absolute privilege to be able to help them. And you devote, what, 60 hours a week to this, right? Yes. That's a lot. Did you devote that much time when you were getting paid <laughs> for a job that stressed you out, made you miserable? No. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show, you know, you love what you do and you're changing lives. You're helping people. You're making this world a better place. I certainly hope so. You really are. So what are you working on right now? Right now we're getting ready to rehab rehabilitate some of the buildings down on Camp, uh, Camp Pendleton. Um, first thing that goes when the budget is cut is maintenance, unfortunately. And there's a recreation area that's in the middle of the camp and it needs some TLC desperately. Yeah. And so uh, my, my club and another Rotary Club are going on November 16th to try and do something to make those buildings better. 
you're going to hire contractors, I hope. <laughs> I hope I don't see you with <laughs> oh, hammer. <yeah. laughs> oh, no. You do labor, too? Physical hard labor? Rotar wow. Rotarians are in construction companies. They're architects. They're, uh, they're all hands-on. What a great They are a club. wonderful organization. They just are wonderful. And I, what, like, what made you want to join this uh, club? Well, I never knew about it when I was working until yeah. we retired and came out here. And a gentleman, my husband was still had a small business, and he came to him and said, I, I want to invite you to our Rotary meeting. Mm -hmm. And we went and found out what these people are like. And it's an international organization. We not only do projects here in the United States, but we do them all over the world. Ah, uh, that's why we're here, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's why we're on this planet. Tell us about the memorial wall. One of the base commanders, I was at, in his office asking him if there were some projects we might do to, on Camp Pendleton. And he said he had been to a memorial service that they have with the families. And one of the mothers came up to him and asked for him to guarantee that her son would never be forgotten. So from that time on, he was looking for financing to build what he mm. thought maybe a, a memorial wall. And he had some designs and ideas. And he asked me if Rotary would be willing to help. Well, I basically leapt over the table and grabbed the design and said absolutely. Yeah. We found out it would cost about $65,000. So we went out and Rotary has a really wonderful way to finance programs mm -hmm. and if a club puts up X amount of dollars they will match it. And so we got six other Rotary clubs to come with us and, and, and put up money. It was matched and we got the $65,000. Wow. It took us two years and unfortunately we now have over 1,500 names. Only, only the Marines that served here on Camp Pendleton's names are on that wall. And, and unfortunate it is, it's sad, but they are forever memorialized on that wall. And we have decided, we will take care of the wall in perpetuity. Every Memorial Day we add the new names, unfortunately, and make sure that the wall is in good shape and stays beautiful forever. They oh. deserve nothing less. I love your commitment, your dedication. You just made my day. I needed to see you. I was having a Monday, Monday day. You know those Mondays. Oh, that yeah. Sometimes nothing goes right. You just turned it all around for me, just Thank like you. you do all those families. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you.